All right, welcome everybody to another EFRAG video here, live coverage from hashtag ESL. What, F Fabio? F Fabio here. Here. Hey. My eyes are down here. Literally. Hello, guys. This is more of a laid-back session. You know, pretty relaxed here. I'm of course Milosh, and oh, that was that was like a sound break. But I'm Milosh, and with me is the one and only Adela Schneider. How are you doing, Adela? Oh, I'm doing very fine. Thank you. All right. So you know, for, for there we go. It's so much nicer than you know standing up all the time. Uh, just a bit ago, we actually interviewed Helena, yeah. and you know, obviously she's the lead of photography here at ESL. So all these beautiful pictures that you see are managed by her and her team here at the ESL, and as well DreamHack, where you know you, you are as well. So talk to us about how you got into photography in general, and then more into esports. All right, it's going to be quite a long story, so you can just you, you can chill. We got this for <laughs> okay, us. we got this. I started photography in high school. It was like more of a part-time hobby. And then because of like uh, school and a lot of my time was devoted to trying to get into good studies, I had to kind of drop it. And then uh, during my studies, I discovered there's such a thing as esports. It was literally like my friend came to me and she was like, hey, did you know that people actually play League of Legends on a competitive level? So I was like, no, you're fucking with me. Like, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, so uh, she showed it to me. Then it turned out there's going to be IEM Katowice in, like, in my home country. So we decided that we might as well go. So we did. And I took my camera with me and that was a jackpot because I, it, was, it was an amazing feeling. Everything was, you know, the, the lights, the players, the crowd. The, it was great. And, and that, was, that was in what year? That was the first IEM Katowice ever. So 2014, 13, I think. 13. Yes, I think it was 2013. 14, right? Where they had it yeah. small, small yeah. place. <laughs> Got some of the Navi players that are looking at us like, what the f what? <laughs> See, we're chill, we're late back here at Ifrak. Alright, continue on, please. And, uh, well, after I discovered, like, eSport as a thing, I tried to get into it more. I, uh, I was hired and, like, more gets involved with one of the teams that w in Poland that were just kind of starting, so I had an opportunity to go to a lot of, like, super little tournaments to just get to know the scene, get to know the people. And then I discovered there's such a thing as DreamHack in Sweden, uh, that DreamHack needs actually volunteers to work with them. And that was another jackpot because I got in actually. So I took my took my camera, well not, not this one obviously, but just the camera I had at the time. I took my sleeping bag, I took my super warm clothes, and in the middle of winter I went to Sweden on my own. And uh, yeah, and that's how it started because then I met Helena, which you interviewed. And uh, yeah, I've learned a lot. I've met a lot of people, and I just just went this way. And after a few years and a few events of doing this uh, for free or voluntarily, I got good enough to actually start to be hired by other people and uh, to be able to like uh, yeah to work. So that was that's it basically. Right. And so you know, you started off. Did you, did you ever go through the whole you know? Well, I'm going to these concerts, to these events, to take pictures there and, you know, post these pictures for people to like. Maybe if they really like them, maybe one day someone will hire me for, you know, private uh, private kind of stuff. You know, I've, I've went through it myself, so, you know, maybe talk us through this, because not a lot of people might know, like, the evolution, the history of, you know, your average photographer. Well... That's, it's basically what you said, that you start going to the events, you start meeting people, you start posting your work online and you start like, you know, getting your name out there. It's a very long and it's actually a very frustrating process because nothing ever happens fast enough and you're like, and you think like, oh, no one, like, you know, no one knows me. I'm, mm, but so I'm just, I get discouraged and like, you know, you get discouraged and you get super sad, but then, you know, Time after time, you just need, you, you get, yeah, you have to be like super patient with it and you just have to keep on pushing and keep on getting better. And it really, really works. But yeah, there's no, there's no magic shortcut here. There's no magic star. You just have to slowly and patiently get your stuff, get your name, get your like work out there. And it will happen eventually if you're like, really after some time. Working hard so, yeah. you know, you, you were talking about you know, evolving and getting better over time. For you, how was and what was the experience of getting better from the level that you were before to where you are now? How does that improvement happen over time? 
Well, first of all, esports is a very um, it's a very specific genre of photography because you have uh, you have either super super dark places and uh, yeah, you have super dark places. Then you have a lot of lights that just you know flash all around, and you have no time to actually get and try to change the settings. You have to be super fast with it. The colors are weird. The players either do not move at all or they move super fast because they get yeah all the time. And so it's very uh, it's a very specific genre. I think it could be com it could be compared to the concert photography. So yeah, so first of all I had to learn that because I started of course as everyone with portraits of my friends and flowers and bees and yes, stuff and like that. Everybody's <laughs> like, "Oh, hey, I had a photography session with yes. my photographer." And yeah, and you know, and you have get pictures of puppies and children and your mom and you know, so, so which is very nice, but yeah, uh, then of course I learned that I need to upgrade my equipment and eSport is one of the few genres when you actually wow, when you actually need good equipment because because of what I said, the very specific conditions which basically need the best the best equipment you can get out there. Yes. And you know, speaking of equipment, what what did you have back in the day? And you know, moving on bit oh, by bit until man. today here at Langsess. <laughs> I st my, went to I am um, Katowice, the first one. I went with a Canon 40D and a kit lens, like 1855, yeah, yeah. like you know, super dark yeah, one. Those. Yeah. <laughs> then I moved on to the Canon 70, and I started buying like 2470 Tamron lens, the one I have with me. But basically, for a long, long time, I rented all my equipment for every event, and so I spent a lot of money on that. But I simply couldn't afford to buy, you know, a whole lens at once. So I rented a lot of equipment. Uh, and now I'm working on Canon 5D Mark III. Hello there, Tom. <laughs> Everybody's looking at like, what the... <laughs> what are they doing? Yes. Yeah, and I'm working on Canon lenses, basically the brightest ones you can get. So the like focal, focal lens, like 2.8 at least. So yeah, and that was something that Helena really, you know, yeah. set up. For some people that have no clue what we're talking about, basically, it's the, if you see an F, that's your F-stop. That's you know, we're talking about the aper aperture, um, you know, and we're gonna you know, maybe talk about the ISO and that kind of stuff. They're very technical things, but trust me, uh, as Fabio discovered, our photographer and our videographer during the event, a simple change in you know one setting can make your your photo go from one place. <laughs> To another completely, but you know th that's the improvement of the actual, you know, technical aspect of the machine itself. How did you improve technically over time? To be honest, I think photography is a very technical, like it's a creative thing, but it's also very technical. So I had to learn every like technical detail and how to use the equipment I got the best I can, because you know I couldn't have this and work on like auto auto mode and you know still be surprised that I don't get the pictures as good as it can be so I really think that like knowing your equipment is the part of being a good photographer but also well I learned the scene I learned the games I learned the players and the reactions I learned what happens during esports like you know uh, like there's a host he comes on stage he does this and that there's the there's the casters there's like so there's a lot of stuff too I learned how to use a lot of programs, like a lot of programs, well, Lightroom and Photoshop on a like, very, very good level, and I had to do it super, super fast. I also had to learn how to uh, work in a studio settings to do like the player portraits, which was a very, very new thing to me, because I've never worked, before esports, I've never worked with a studio setup, never in my life, so that was, uh, that was also a big thing for me. And, you know, speaking of setups, my... Um Prior to events, how do you pre prepare to them? Because you know, in normal events, usually, um, like when we got here, basically first thing, you know, went around seeing what are the light conditions that we're going to work with, how are we going to set things up. How do you prepare before an event, physically and mentally, with as well your camera equipment? Well, uh, first of all, I try to establish what kind of stage am I going to work in because some of the events uh, have like more simple and little stages and some of the events like this one I have a huge, huge stage with lots of life and lots of swag so I, <laughs> I should know I should know what I'm working with and I should know what equipment should I bring uh, if I don't know the game and the scene I of course I try to read as much as I can because well I don't have to know everything as for example hosts and casters do but it really 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 helps um, 
<laughs> There's Haas from the ESL admin team from ESL UK is like, again, what the F are these guys doing? We're basically at the entrance of the entire arena. So literally thousands tomorrow will be streaming in through here. So, you know, we were talking a bit about you know, how things, how do you manage things before an event? Um, how do you do it? <laughs> hey, machine. <laughs> <laughs> even even Dennis Honke, I mean, yes, it was pretty sexy. Machine is a pretty sexy guy. <laughs> so you know, preparations for events normally you know it's pretty difficult. You have to set things up again, knowing your equipment too. Exactly, and in, in events as big as this, where this weekend we're gonna have fourteen thousand people at this stage. Yeah, already just thinking about it makes your head explode. But. How difficult is it to prepare physically at this point to be able to move around the stage as well makes things happen? Esport and video games actually had me start working out and running. See, mom? No, really, really, because See, mom. I like I managed to I managed to manage without it for some time, but now the I'd say a year ago, half a year ago, I realized that I either start working out and I'm just going to be dead after every event, and it really helps. Uh, yeah, after the events, most of the like a lot of the photographers have problems with like their necks and their backs because we carry our equipment on our like in our hands and on our backs. So that's also a very difficult thing, and we have to work on that. And mentally, well, I just try to focus on like how amazing the event will be. I not I don't think about the amount of people and the like amount of people that will see my photos. I just think. Well, it's going to be fun, and I'm going to do my best to just convey the... Do, do you just yeah. think about the hype and the event itself? Yeah, I think, think about the hype, and I think that I will try my best to just, you know, to con convey this hype, because the people who are watching from home on the, or reading the articles later, they watch the stream, of course. They uh, they watch the videos and the highlights and, and, and such. But I think photography also helps with that. At least I hope it helps with that. So so personally, I can say it helps quite a bit. <laughs> so that's for that's, sure. That's, yeah, that's that's what I personally think about. And you know, now speaking more about uh, you know the players, you were talking about those. Are there any players that you really focus on? Like, let's say of the teams that we have today. Now, obviously, mm -hmm. you're Polish, so you know, probably Virtus Pro is on. You know, well, Virtus Pro are very um, about very me, very aggressive, me. and they're no, no, no. I mean, they are very. Uh, they like the camera, and the camera likes them. They, you know, they make faces to the camera. They make this Pasha's and Pasha and Pasha does and all this of flexing. With his, yeah. Taz with red eye, they just you know go home. That's fun. But during the game, they are not really as I'd say expressive as the rest of the teams. For example, SK, they just go crazy. Um, Flipside went absolutely nuts after the win. Just a while ago, Australis is especially they now. Were crying, they basically. were crying. That was the first time I've seen the whole team crying all the time. Uh, so yes, I'm really hoping to for Australis to get far. Also because they are very expressive. Um, let me think. Well, Navi. Navi is really also. Oh, wow. There we go. <laughs> I think that was Mouse. Uh, because Mouse shouts shout a lot too. Yeah, and these are the these are the teams from the top of my head. They're just you know very, very emotional. Very emotional. Very that's, emotional. That's basically what you need to capture these photos that we you know we see you know either on on Flickr or with Helena on her website mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Uh, you know um, about photography in general. Um, what are, what might be your advice as someone that at this point is is a story of someone that grew up, you know, basically just with a dream mm -hmm. and with their own work and, you know, a lot of a lot of tiredness basically mm -hmm. got lucky with with the person that they met and got all the way to an event as big as this. I know it's it, it can get pretty emotional thinking about it. <laughs> yeah. Cuz, you know, even for me that someone, you know, that casted Battle for 4, which is irrelevant compared to <laughs> esports and where you've you've been a photographer too. Um, it's it's a pretty yeah. exciting thing to think about. So, you know, what can you say about that and to other people that might have this sort of dream too? I would say the same thing, the same, I would give you the same advice that was given to me during my first IEM. Like, I met a photographer who was working there at the time and I was like, wow, so what would you say to me exactly? Like, what, were you working here? This is amazing. What would you say to me? And he just looked at me like an alien, like I was an alien and he said, just do it. 
really, just don't be afraid. Just do it. Rent your lenses. Go to the events. Just you know, grind your way through, and it's it's gonna happen. And at some point, if you're good enough. No, I promise, it's gonna happen. You just have to be patient with it. Very patient. Yeah. Well, not very patient, but you have to be patient. But it's gonna happen. I promise. Okay. That's a fantastic story. Like this goes for for anything as well. You know, there's a lot of people that watch on it might be like aspiring casters or you yeah. know aspiring photographers, you know, aspiring in anything in your life. If you want to get that job, you know, uh, you know, F McDonald's. You know, you don't want to work there your entire life. Well, if your dream is to work at McDonald's, then you know, I'll just do it, man. Just just do it. Yeah. Do your dream and do don't let dream. your dreams you be memes. You. Like seriously. Yeah, you do you. It's, don't be afraid. <laughs> No fear, my friend. No fear, my friend. There we go. Pasha That's, is here. There we go. Pasha is in actually. Is he here today? Uh, I no. saw some of the British Pro, but I haven't seen Pasha yet. So, it's going to be awesome. <laughs> so, you know, what are you looking for? Since, you know, we can't really, um, we couldn't really ask this to other people, but maybe for you can ask, do you have a favorite team uh, that you would like to see maybe in the final and maybe well, win this thing? Be... It's going to be super obvious when I say, of course, Virtus Pro, <laughs> but I really would like to see them in the final. Uh, because of a lot of reasons, but yeah, I would like to see them. I am very curious about what Flipside will bring, it, bring to the stage tomorrow. I'm really, really curious about that. So, yeah, these are the two teams I will be watching, but knowing my luck, they will, I don't know. <laughs> I hope not. Yeah. But. <laughs> Yeah. I know that every single time we're like, oh, this team, different. this team, yeah, this team, this time. Oh. Yeah, I remember last year with Envious, and everyone was like, yeah, Envious got this in the bag in yeah. the final, and then yeah. Fnatic <laughs> just rolled over them. Yeah. All right, well, thanks a lot for being here, Adela. It's it's your first time on video camera, so it's a good thing we were you know chilled and relaxed. Yeah, that was that was actually a great idea. That was a great. Yeah. She's a very smart woman, as you can tell. She has one. Basically, we drag this from below up like ten. Uh, I don't, don't know how many. Anyone. Yeah, Oops. stairs and stuff, and we're like, yeah, we're just gonna sit here, and then we have you know producer, caster, everything <laughs> passing by us, making really weird faces to say the least. Yeah. The right. machine face, my God. <laughs> yeah, that was a quote-unquote face. I don't think that's. Yeah, that's. It's a family show machine. Well, let's just. Let's just uh, make that relevant again. So, you know, really, thank you, Adela, for coming around again. It's It's been a pleasure. Hopefully, we get to see some of the beautiful pictures that you have lined up. Where can people actually check you out? Because, you know, there's uh, pictures that pass by on the ESLCS Twitter, but you have stuff on your own, like Adela has, for example, her own Adela website. has her own Twitter, of course. It's uh, at damnu underscore M-A-W-R-R. It's Demi Moore. Demnumar is pronounced Mavr actually in Polish, but not, not many people can do that, so it's Demnumar. Uh, I also have my own Flickr with pretty much the same address, like Demnumar, and uh, yeah, that's it. <laughs> and for your League of Legends fans, she's a Unicorns of Love fan. <laughs> so, you know, we're talking about her unicorn socks as well, so that's. Flamingo. A flami well, let's How imagine that. It's a flamingo. I've never seen a unicorn actually. I've only actually seen one because I was playing. <laughs> The yes, and I got at at the end. I'm not going to spoil anything, but there's unicorns. There's, it's fucking there's amazing. Unicorn <laughs> yes. All right. Well, I would like to ask more about the Witcher, but I don't think this is the one for that's, it. Maybe. That's another interview. Yes. Another you know, but final one just to end it. Yennefer or Triss? Yennefer, of course. There we go. She's she's the one to be. Please. All right. Well, thanks guys for you know watching the video. Hope you really enjoyed it. This is a very you know, relaxed video. So thank you, Adela, yet again. Thank and you very much again. No problem. Well, I get to see more of the pictures obviously being posted on Twitter you know, from her own Demi Moore and obviously on ESLCS. If you've been checking those out, especially the caster's photo <laughs> with, you know, the boy, boy band. bands. The boy band. That was basically her doing. So we'll see you on there. Thanks for watching this and see you maybe some other time here on the EFRAC couch. <laughs> see you soon.